Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hi, everybody. It's a bit of a late night uh, Sunday night stream for me here, but I figured um, it's been a crazy busy couple of days and I figured I would uh, spend a bit of time and invest in actually doing this uh, Rogue Trader model review. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Rogue Trader stuff. It's uh, it's pretty darn sweet. I'm really digging the, uh, the the idea behind it. I love the you know the kill zones, things like that. So um, looking really really good. Um, so I just figured I'd just take a few minutes and uh, maybe just kind of make it. It's kind of a shorter stream, but um, I want to make sure that I get the uh, you know basically all the models kind of taken a good look at. And um, oh man, they're so good and they're unique and original and uh, yeah, they're really really sweet. So um, okay, so let's uh, let's get into it right away. Um, again, thanks for all the happy wishes on the fourth thousand subs uh that's pretty darn cool i'm actually really uh excited about uh kind of seeing where this goes as a channel here so um all right so let's get started off uh all you see right now is my desktop i guess um let's start with the doors so the doors that we have um we get uh one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten doors and doors all right so um these are them actually it's um they're they're part of the terrain set obviously but um you know for all the narrative stuff that we end up doing uh these are going to be fantastic now they're in that kind of they're all in that kind of high density plastic you can see that it's not crazy clear uh like you know you see the you know the bits of the textures in there but i mean for terrain it's it's actually nice it used to be i know when the sigmar stuff came out it was a real I don't know. It was a real pain in the butt. It wasn't. A, it wasn't that great. Um, but uh, this is much, you know, kind of stronger and firmer. Um, you know, it was a little bit hard getting some of these kind of nubs and bits off. So you can see where I've sanded it down a little bit here. But uh, I mean, for terrain, it's awesome. You get a load of it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really liking the look and feel of it. I like the fact that it's very much got like an old school kind of ship type, uh, uh, you know, kind of look and feel to it with the gears and the handles to manually pressurize everything instead of making it watertight, right? Um, they've got the Rogue Trader kind of labels in here. And then you've got, you know, kind of the, you know, the, the little bits of symbology in there, the Mechanicum kind of Sanctum uh, Mechanicum symbology that goes along with it. But they're double-sided, which is really cool. I think it'd be very, have been very easy just to have like kind of one side to them, but uh, definitely a cool piece in here. And we'll, we'll spend some time uh, definitely, definitely putting these together and uh, painting them up nice. So uh, very, very cool. Uh, next up, we've got um, these guys here, which are, you know, kind of the objectives chests. And, uh, you know, I thought they'd be two pieces initially, but they're just the one. Uh, they got a little bit of a texture going on up the top. And they got the same kind of iconography that they've got for our, all of our, um, you know, on all the uniforms and all that for the Star Striders. So, yeah, I know, just kind of a cool little objective -y type piece. I mean, I'm sure even if you got your hands on an extra set of this stuff, that it would be just great for any of the narrative type bits and pieces. So, not really, really cool. Uh, what's next? Um, we've got a bunch of these consoles. We get four of these guys. And, um, you know, I've got the Spartan Scenix ones, and they're quite good. I'm really impressed with them. They've got the paneling and all that. Uh, but one of the ways you could configure the Spartan Scenix was to have just kind of this smaller little console that you get to take a look at and play around with. Uh, but these guys are nice and simple and easy. I like the different kind of raised... Uh, platforms, they've got the keypads in there, the keyboards all put in there, uh, crazy sliders going on, gauges and all of that. Uh, inside you got a little bit of kind of the wizardry glaven with the wiring and all that, the little skull in there, because you know, G-Dub wouldn't be the same without skulls, you've got speakers in the background, and just a nice little command console. Now in the in game obviously we can use them as objective markers, but um, it would be kind of neat if we're doing uh, different uh, types of objectives inside of a ship. Um, oh, by the way, I met with a, um, a gentleman who does a lot of the laser cut MDF stuff, and we're going to be dealing with some custom stuff in the future. He's going to give me some stuff to review on the channel. Uh, but for our events, we're actually going to end up doing some MDF type stuff. So I'm thinking more kind of ship interiors, things like that. So uh, anyway, um, these would be great in there if, you know, just even outside of the Rogue Trader stuff. So. Yeah, nice, nice, really decent. And again, it's that nice kind of high density stuff. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're the most detailed things ever, but uh, you know, really nicely put together. And if you're looking at it, look at this. 
they're actually opposites of each other so you've got a little bit of variety it's not just a cut copy and paste of the of the panels actually that's really neat too so this was all a um i believe it was a single sprue I'm, no maybe it was two sprues we'll see i'm trying to remember now uh what else oh guys so you get two of these pipes i think it was two sprues that we got you get two of these pipes now in um in the Kill Team stuff, uh, one of the big things that I like about Kill Team is that terrain actually makes a big difference. So for example, if I was to take my Imperial Fist friend here and put him in behind, he'd actually be obscured, uh, which is pretty solid. I mean, it's 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 nice. In 40K now, I mean, in, in Sigmar 2, if you're in terrain, you're in terrain. If you're out of terrain, you're out of terrain. You've either got cover or you don't. And in this one here, that actually half cover makes a makes a big difference. So um, for games of kill teams, especially, it's going to be pretty nice to have uh, these little bits and pieces in here. I mean, I'd love to get a hold of a couple more of these and just do them up in a line, so you got lots of kind of cover as you bound and move forward. So not really, really decent models. Um, aside from just having that kind of size to them, I mean, there's got tons of detail. And again, these are just you know, kind of idle terrain pieces. You could have just done a pipe with pretty much anything. Uh, but, you know, it's nice to see you've got all the kind of the riveting in here. You've got the tanks and even the tanks have little gauges and buttons on them. There's gauges all through here. And this reminds me of old like shipboard kind of diesel engines. And I think they're trying to carry on that, that kind of idea of these ships being these old kind of mechanical um, different devices and pieces. So Oh, I love that kind of detail, and it gives it more of a realistic or gritty feel to it, even though you're playing in sci-fi uh, starships. Um, small criticism with the model is they've got the seam right up the middle, which is fine, but you can see that these taper in a little bit here, and it makes it, uh, it definitely calls attention to that one seam that's in there. And there's not much you can do to fill that or, or what have you, but, you know, we'll just paint it up. We'll just do a kind of a nice kind of inking on the inside and, you know, a high contrast piece, and I'm sure it'll be... I'm sure it'll be just fine but yeah i know it's really nice i just and it's a good sized piece too instead of just having like the one piece you could have two or three uh dudes hanging in behind uh and your kill team could do um you know some wicked damage from behind the cover of those guys so pretty neat pretty neat indeed uh what else do we have in here for uh terrain bits uh we've got so i knock this off to the side here oh the um big pocket all these pods here. So with the escape pods, they obviously, obviously model them after the drop pods. And I'm really liking the kind of the general aesthetic of them for a kind of a cheapy terrain piece. Uh, they've got lots and lots of personality. Um, but they come actually with a variety of different ways to do it. So I figured I'd mix it up a little bit because on the board I want it to look a little bit distinctive. Um, and one of them has this kind of rear... Uh, access hatch and you can see it on uh, these parts here uh, and I just wanted to show that you know, maybe they're going to kind of check the pressure and check the gauges you know like high low HL um, uh, you know oxygen tank or whatever uh, but it'd be kind of neat to see you know just inside the kind of the gubbins and all the things that essentially makes it work and uh, yeah I know really digging that um, and then on the other piece here I did the front of the escape pod so I left that open so this way I'm not painting a ton of detail, I'm not investing a ton of time on that terrain, but I do think it's really important to kind of arrange um, what it's going to look like or have people be able to go in and see what it kind of looks like. So just giving them that little bit of a peek inside uh, of the different pieces, but still essentially saving time with, uh, you know, just having some of the standard drop pods in there and let the imagination kind of carry it forward. I do like the fact that the drop pods have always been shaped like uh, sarcophagi or like, <laughs> or like you know, tombs, um, you know, coffins, that kind of thing. So uh, definitely humor is not lost as they get launched in there and then sent on their uh, their merry way. So uh, the control fins, again, very reminiscent of the drop pods. E even the little vents that are in here, very reminiscent of the drop pods. But um, yeah, liking them. I think they're they're neat and distinct and you understand immediately what they're uh, what they're all about. So, um, I mean, the amount of plastic that you get in terms of terrain is fairly substantial. I've got them all kind of set off to the side. But... Oh. <laughs> and we also get, in the mix here, I forgot the one last one. <laughs> this, you get like captain's chairs, you know, very, uh, 
very Captain Kirk, right? They're very, very decent that you got these in. They look super comfy. I mean, they're padded all to, you know, all to hell here. They uh, look super, super nice. Nice footrest in there. Uh, you know, I, I similar. Uh, I imagine similar kind of take in the barber shop that's uh, sitting in there as well. But these little chairs, I mean, what a neat kind of distinctive thing. You got the Aquila on the back. Uh, kind of picture the director's chair, uh, you know, kind of thing on the back there. But, uh, I mean, just great little, you know, characterful pieces. And I'm sure in, like, in the Rogue Trader stuff, when they're sitting on board the ship, it's, um, you know, it's nice to see that you've got, uh, you know, just a little bit of variety there uh, for your consoles and your commands. And you can even set up control stations and uh, command couches, things like that. Uh, it's really nice and really uh, simple and easy. Um, but it's just terrain that I don't know if you'd ever necessarily buy on your own. But to have tons of it is just... It's just great, so uh, loving that. But let me uh, collect all the plastic together that we get. So when I say we get a lot of doors, I mean we get we get a lot of doors. Um, so we get one, two, three, four, five. This is our door we previewed. Tons. Six. Uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten doors. So we get the ten doors in there. So we got. Uh, loads of them. We've got the the two kind of uh, chair couch thingamadoos here. Uh, we've got our consoles. And uh, again, I do really like the fact that they've mixed it up. It would have been very easy. And uh, let's be honest, all they did was reverse them, right? Like, I mean, um, that's all they did. But still, it looks, uh, it looks a little bit distinctive and unique, which is great. Uh, we've got the tubes, uh, the piping. We've got the, uh, the, the escape pods here the drop pod themes escape pods and then in addition to that we've got our little treasury chests we got four of those so uh the the plastic for the terrain just in sheer mass is is pretty substantial for this kit uh, i like the objective fact that we can use these as objective markers for no matter what and if you're playing around with like a kill team or or something like that uh having the imperial treasure or the rogue trader treasures is uh it's pretty darn sweet to see Okay, so that's the terrain. Um, you get a whole bunch in there, and uh, I mean, I really like it. It's it's, it's awesome. Um, all right, you know, we need we need more interesting music than this. Uh, it's just on the shuffle there. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, so um, yeah, so not bad. I mean, I, I think the value is uh, is definitely there. Uh, definitely a decent amount of trimming and filing is is kind of needed on this stuff. Uh, make sure you're clipping with your clippers, and then you know, just kind of sanding with one of your. Um, or or um, or filing with one of your files there. So uh, anyway, um, so I'll move on from these. But yeah, just a big pile of stuff that comes in the box. All right, it's gonna take me a second here to get all this stuff off. Why not? All right. All right. Now, I'm trying to figure out what the star of the show is here. Um, whether it's the, uh, the Gellerpox infected stuff, or if it's the Imperial, like the Rogue Trader guys. And um, I'm not really sure. I think the, uh, uh, the Lucidian Star Striders, I think those guys, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of one of those things. I'm sure everyone's going to have their take. But you get both in the set, so it's, uh, it's pretty rad. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's take a peek. So let's um, let's start off with the the Geller Pox infected. I think there's just a little bit more uh, kind of in there. Now we're going to start off with the mites. Okay. Now what I love, and this is something that's actually a very uh, subtle thing that I'm really digging with the design of these. I think that's all of them. Yeah, I just get four. And what I'm really digging about the design of the mites is, let's get the exact name here as I grab my uh, handy dandy book. Um, now, I've, I've kind of been uh, just kind of working my way through, um, trying not to dive into the books too much. I really want to start kind of playing with these guys and seeing how they look. Um, so the curse mites, that's these guys here. So these guys, the curse mites, basically, um, they kind of go and they uh, they spread kind of the, uh, the 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 plague as they go. Now they're super tiny. One of the things that I think is really neat about it is that it offers another scale 
other than a big horde of nerdlings, right? Um, you don't get a billion of them, uh, which is great. Um, and, you know, adding those into, say, your nerdling bases for your nurgle guys, um, it just gives you a little bit of a different scale, right? And I think that's 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 kind of an important thing. Um, nerdlings are amazing uh, units, they're amazing kind of models, especially if you got some of the older ones. But what I really like is the fact that you can have these guys running around and they'll soak up casualties for you uh, in a big way or they can run off and do other stuff. But those five wound or four wound nerglings, like the, the the multiple wound nerglings, they can run out there and they can cause you big interference. But these guys can go and just like pounce on the odd survivor, which I think is, is, is pretty neat. Um, next up, we'll move on to the uh, eye stinger swarms. And uh, I don't know if, you're, if you've heard of the fluff of the eye stinger swarms, but it's kind of terrifying. Um, they basically just go for your eyeballs. So it's a uh, swarms of bugs uh, heading out there, flying around, and uh, yeah, pretty much coming from the uh, diseased carcasses, carci, car carcasses, um, uh, basically coming from the uh, diseased carcasses and uh, implanting uh, with a whole bunch. Oh, here's another mite. Ta da! Okay. Um, but essentially, uh, just wreaking complete havoc. Now, when these guys buzz around, uh, they will fly uh, right at your, uh, right at your face. Oh, I'm finding more mites as I go. Look at me, great, uh, great YouTubing, Jay. Nice work. Um, so uh, we get a pile of mites in there, which is kind of cool. We get about six of those, which is great. And then, um, am I confusing different stuff? No, that's a grub. That's a grub too. I'm previewing the grubs. Look at me. Hey, it's a late Sunday. What can I say? It's been a busy week. Busy weekend too. Um, so, okay, the eye stinger swarms. These guys like buzz around and they uh, they go right for your eyeballs. They try and uh, uh, do as much damage as they can so that you're blind as you're being attacked uh, by these uh, crazy Nurgle demon-esque type things. Um, and uh, you can see here uh, kind of coming out of one of the corpses. Uh, very reminiscent of the... Um, uh, the malign sorcery box where they've got a very similar type thing where they've got all kind of the little bugs and flies like rolling up out of the corpses. Uh, so, you know, just nice, cool, kind of interesting uh, bits there. And again, we get back to that whole sense of scale. And I think they've done such a good job with this. You can see we got little tiny uh, stinger swarm dudes. We've got kind of the next step up. We've got the medium sized guys. And then we've got the big monster at the end. Um, but just gives a ton of different visual variety. And it's also kind of cool because when you get to see one of the guys uh, up close and personal, um, it allows you to kind of imagine what these guys look like at small when they're just, you know, kind of packaged up as a, as a swarm here. I like the fact that it's coming from the uh, gut of a skeleton, not at all eerie or uh, creepy there. Uh, good times, good times. And um, if this guy here too, you can see that it's flying at us of woods. Is that their head? It is! It's one of the Star Strider heads. I didn't even notice that as I was putting them together. Sweet! And you get the, all the different scales of all the little flies that kind of bolt out of there. I, mean, I think they're really, uh, they're really kind of neat. Um, you know, just being able to see these. I mean, it's such a Nurgle trope, you know, to have these flies kicking around. Sweet! And this big guy here. <laughs> Look at that. He's got that kind of trademarked. Uh, Nurgle kind of coiled over multiple arms and just this big fat fly going for your eyeballs. Sweet! Um, not creepy as hell at all. Um, the mites, I mean, these guys look like... Um, I know I didn't really take a detailed look at them. They're, they're kind of smaller and stuff. But they're basically, you know, these big... Uh, you know, like ticks or mites or something like that. And the way that they talk about them is that these things kind of exist on the ships, you know, and, and then the uh, Geller Pox or the Geller Field drops. Um, uh, the engine gets infected and then it kind of spreads this mutagen, this plague, and it makes all these little parasites super large. Um, again, terrifying. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. Uh, what's next? Oh, the grubs. Now, the grubs also, uh, like the mites, the grubs also offer us a little bit of scale, which I think is cool. It would have been so easy just to cut, copy, paste, maybe turn ahead here and turn ahead there or something. Um, I love the fact that these grubs are... And look at all the pustules and the bits. And they've got that kind of bloated, kind of caterpillary, almost, I don't know, like just these kind of big festering, uh, these big festering wounds like rolling around like maggots. It's just awesome. You can see in here, we can see how violent they are starting to get. They got the teeth and the claws and the bits and... You know, spewing out all kinds of grossness 
And each one of these models themselves, I mean, there's there's so much to see and so much to paint in here. Um, it's going to be tricky. And I'll have to kind of put it to you guys as well. I'm wondering if maybe we should do a... Um, uh, i got to trim that one piece off there. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe we should... Um, we should do like a series of streams instead of doing just a series of videos, kind of taking in a bit of individual time with these guys. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to put it to you guys to see if we stream it or if we, um, or if we just kind of do the individual tutorials. Anyway, um, and then of course you get the big, big grub. Um, and this guy has all teeth. Like he's got all the teeth and all the, the tasters in there. So I'm sure they just love latching onto you. And you can picture these guys like both infecting with disease and like just soaking up uh you know all your bodily fluids gross awesomely gross really good so even just painting these guys is going to be just it's going to be a little bit of a challenge but oh man it should be uh pretty solid i'll have to make sure i get that uh, little nub off before we go to paint ah uh, what's next oh the glitchlings these guys are cool so the glitchlings are related to uh nerlings and where nurglings are all kind of crazy mischievous um these guys being born off of this kind of mechanical uh on this mechanical ship um they've all got these attributes where sure um they've got all these attributes in here where you know they're still got that same kind of funniness to them but they've got these you know these these kind of metallic helmets and they look like gas masks and stuff and Though they are related to the Nurglings, um, you know, they kind of travel through the ships and they, uh, in, in addition to being goofy, see this guy's got a busted bottle, like nothing rowdier than a glitchling with a, you know, after a few, right? So um, don't really need to see. But again, you can see all the cabling and stuff coming through them. So they've got very much a mechanical kind of, you know, uh, look and feel to them, which is which is great. Again, it's a little bit different than a regular Nurgling. And uh, I'm thinking it's really cool. Busted up femur here. <laughs> very cool you know little tongues kind of kicking out and awesome the potato sack uh, glitchlings very cool oh the three-legged race glitchlings that's what it is that's what i'm looking for and of course you got this guy here he's got his little wooden sword he's got his little tentacles coming off the side and he's just got all these little bits of detail and all that so you got the little bit of hair kind of coming off the back he's got his peg leg a vast aramati uh and no, I think they're just really cool and they're playful, which is nice. I'm glad they kept that playfulness. So with the smaller creatures, um, they've done something genuinely new uh, for Nurgle where they've kept that same kind of playfulness. They have kept that same kind of uh, grossness, but they still gave you a whole bunch of new models to paint and play with and something that is unique and different and I don't know, just kind of kind of fun, actually. So I'm not sure what they'll be like on the battlefield. Like, I don't know if they're going to be amazing. I don't see, uh, you know, the uh, Adepticon builds all of a sudden taking in like five trillion glitchlings and stuff. But I do think it's really neat that they go with the story and that they've got these smaller guys for only a few points that can go out there and just, you know, wreak havoc out, havoc out in the battlefield while your main, you know, your Death Guard or your Nurgle Demons, your super tough guys, uh, go out there and they, they just keep kind of doing the, the damage. So really liking this. And they've all got that disgustingly resilient for the most part. I'm not sure if the bugs do. It's been a while since I've looked at it now. So, um, but uh, yeah, really liking the, the, the kind of the flavor that's going down with these guys. Very cool. All right, so I'll sneak these guys off to the side. Uh, next up in our big list of doom here, uh, we're going to move towards... Uh, where's our guys here? The Vox Shamblers. All right, I just want to make sure I got the name right. So uh, the Vox Shamblers here, uh, you don't get a ton of them. You get three uh, in the kill team. But what's really cool about these guys is that they're essentially the engine hands and as we get kind of larger and larger into the uh, models as they kind of go up in scale one of the things that i've noticed that i'm really really digging is the fact that they've got it seems like they've carried on attributes from their former lives after you know kind of before the infection so these guys have kind of their hazardous masks uh, their has masks 
has masks is that a thing uh, on and you know they're the engine breakers and so they go in there and they're the ones who kind of get all the work done uh, under underneath the decks you know the neglected the abused uh, kind of no exposure to the outside world and uh, it looks like they've turned over right so you've got kind of mechanics you've got like a frag grenade in here um, you know look at that axe like just just awesome in the shambly robes uh, you know kind of the one shoe on one shoe off just giving no craps beautiful yeah and then kind of the the comms arrays and stuff really neat on um, this guy here I thought it was kind of neat to see um, see the collars on these guys uh, I'm wondering if these guys were kind of like press ganged into service uh, you can see they're kind of control collars on all of them and you think they're kind of press ganged into service and now they get to exact their revenge uh, which is pretty cool. Now, very much like a plague bearer, they've got the bloated tummies, they've got uh, kind of the ribs showing and all that. But this guy's got a kind of a theme of like locks and chains um, and how he's kind of, you know, chained up or he was, you know, a, a prisoner with the with the, the, the press gang uh, collar and all that. Really cool. The peg leg, of course, nothing more piratey than that. So they've got this kind of cool kind of uh, Nurgle... Um, a piece up here that's made its way on uh they got this really kind of cool nurgle kind of piratey ship you know uh, type of theme to them which is just awesome i mean even he's bound to his tool here and now he's using it against his initial oppressors uh very cool uh nails are kind of holding them all together even though he's all broken just a very nice and interesting model and those faces those iron masks just crazy intimidating and, and, and awesome to see uh, what do we got? Another pirate guy with the classic hook that's in there, right? Uh, he's got kind of the bloated foot uh, with a little bit of the kind of the work pants and stuff. He's got his leg shackle here that's been broken. So these guys working in, on these ships, I don't think they're very happy people. I mean, I don't think it's a very happy life that they've got going for them. I mean, uh, and, and then, of course, getting, you know, infected with the Geller pox makes them absolutely no different. They've got the collar on. They've got the work... Uh, the work uh, garb kind of on here but look at the big hook nothing more kind of space piratey than that and oh man look it's been screwed on and the cast on the screws is great they're straight uh, you get to see the kind of the little um the little flathead screwdriver slot in there and just really neat i'm also liking the fact that you can definitely still see that these guys worked under decks in the engine rooms and all of that so when they speak, these guys, when they're rolling forward, they confuse the enemy and they just speak in little bits of static and, and kind of the scrap code here. And they infect other machines with the scrap code as they move forward. So again, it's that whole kind of play on these guys were the ones that fixed the engines and now they're the ones doing all the, uh, doing all the damage. Yeah, very sweet. No, really neat models. Really neat models. All right. Uh, next up... Uh, the ones that we're going to go for are our hulks. And, um, you know, the, the, they've got the hull breakers is kind of what they're uh, being called on here. And I think they're really neat. And what I'm seeing here is, one, this kind of grossness and these high levels of, of mutation and all that. But what I'm really liking is it really they really did have kind of a former life. And that former life is is jumping in. Hey, Lord of Change, how's it going, man? But um, I'm loving the look and feel and taste of these guys. Like, they just they just feel gruesome. So this guy is uh, awesome. I mean, just, just from a sheer model perspective, uh, the size is substantial. Like, we put him next to a Primaris, right? And the size is, is pretty monstrous, really all things being equal. So they're bloated. And, uh, you know, I kind of figured that these guys were in charge of the kitchen or the... You know, the, you know, kind of, you know, keeping the food going or whatever. And it's just a really neat look and feel to them. Now, obviously, there's a whole bunch of analogies towards the, the butcher type thing here where you got the big meat cleaver that's in there. But what I like in terms of the carryover, again, you see the ankle, the chained ankle going in there, right? Um, what I'm really liking is the fact that as a cook, you've got all these mouths to feed, right? Um, and they've kind of carried that analogy over that you got all these gaping maws and all these other demons and stuff in here, like just kind of coming out of the guy. But it's again, it's all those mouths to feed. You've got the features of the hooks, 
right? And the, you know, kind of the crazy hair. You get all the little bits of, uh, you know, kind of all the little tags that are in there. His, his, you know, his, uh, his, his cooking whites have gone a little bit um, awry. I'm going to paint them white and throw lots and lots of blood on there. He's got all of his hooks and different pieces in here to, you know, from all the meat hooks, you know, he's got his kidney in the back here because, you know, steak and kidney pie is amazing. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a pretty sweet looking model altogether. And I think the big thing is, again, I love these mouths that you got to feed. And I think, I think we'll be doing loads more, uh, loads, loads of detail with that for sure. All right, so that's one of them. Um, the next guy, I think, is going to be the guy who basically was the soldier guy. Uh, the dog tags are kind of the first giveaway that's in there. Uh, he's got all his guts and everything kind of oozing out. Um, maybe he was the kind of master at arms who uh, would throw people in prison. Because, again, you can see that you got all this detail here of the of the keys is you know his keys kind of going along with them he's got that kind of super soldier uh, kind of feel to him where he's you know got this massive tool of of war that's kind of mutated out of all of his uh his, his kind of his arm and everything there um he's got all these horns that have kind of sprouted up almost like a rhino right kind of following that analogy um and just this big brute of a dude uh awesome and then we get uh, to kind of the bloated leg, this kind of muted and transforming leg, very much again like a rhino that's in here. And then carrying that over to what arm? He's got a big, gross, fly demon thing kind of coming out as he's spawning more and more of these bugs. Because literally his arm is turning into a ginormous fly, um, as unsettling as that it would be. I wonder if he can make it talk like a puppet. I don't. I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> anyway, loving the look and feel. The Wolverine uh, chops down here. Uh, the pork chops down at the side uh, for the sideburns will be great to paint. But just a lot of cool feeling and kind of weight behind this guy. Really, really neat. Now, on every ship, in order to function, I think you have to have, you know, kind of a constant supply of fresh food. And aside from having a farm, um, I think your next best bet is to have kind of a, not an aquarium of fish, but basically a big tank of, of fish. So I honestly see this guy as being the, the fisher guy that went in there and uh, kind of, you know, harnessed all the fish and stuff, the squid, all the, all the sea animals in the lower hold. And I think this guy was probably in charge of it. And you can tell that that's carried in with his mutation here of this, you know, this beautiful squid. I mean, look at the detail. You can see little kind of suckers on uh, the tentacles that are coming out here and, and all the way through here. And this this ginormous squid. So instead of it being a fly, um, it really is just this kind of cool squid piece through. And you can actually see maybe uh, maybe one of his co-workers tried to fight him off or maybe the, the squid jumped him and turned him into fish dude. Um, but you can see the spear that's kind of gone through him here. Uh, so instead of collecting that for dinner, I think he got collected in there as well. Um, he's got on his guts here, he's got again, uh, just kind of this stitched together uh, kind of look and feel to him. I want to do that all kind of bruised up with purples and stuff. A little bit different than my uh, Nurgle guys for sure. And he's even got a fish on a hook. Look at that. <laughs> right there, a little bit of detail. Uh, his loincloth is all in like a seaweedy uh, kind of color, which is pretty sweet. And again, he's got uh, the hooks. So I'm wondering if this is the guy that dove into the tank um, to kind of get the fish out. Now, as far as the face goes, he's got that very kind of Cthulhu uh, type head with the squid uh, tentacles in there, right? And he's done, overdone in, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean and all that. Um, about Chaos Spawn in size, you know what, James? I can actually get a spawn and show you. We'll take a look at this and I'll actually show you against the spawn if that works for you, man. Um, but uh, yeah, and I'm loving the, the, the kind of piranha -y face here too. Like you can see that it's... He's got the big pile of teeth uh, in here, kind of those slanted eyes. So total fish dude face guy awesomeness. Yeah, really cool. Really nice. Like I really, really dig that. Um, all right, James, let me see if I can track down a uh, spawn for you here. Now you're testing the organization and that's just never, ever good. Uh, hold on, right one second. All right, I found one. 
All right, James, so if we take a look here, this is, um, that is a Chaos Spawn. So yeah, I put them roughly in the same size comparison uh, with the Spawn for sure. No, awesome question, man. Yeah, it's nice to be able to see the size comparisons when you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do with them. But if you wanted to use these guys as spawn, I mean, I don't think you would be a miss at all in kind of bringing them in. Uh, they've got, you know, they're echoing even kind of the kind of the breakery, uh, you know, the big kind of crab claw type thing in there as well. And I mean, the spawn are nice, but they've been around for so long, and I think uh, I think it's yeah, it's been difficult for people to kind of I don't know, just kind of see you know the same thing over and over again. Not that we see a bunch of spawn anymore, not in our group anyway, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, James, no problems, man. Anytime. It's, um, yeah, it's nice to have those questions kind of answered when you can see the stuff in front of you. Uh, can they be used outside of Rogue Trader? I really want to add them to my Death Guard. Lord of Change, they actually give you uh, the kill team rules uh, for these guys. So you get the cards and you get all their, um, you get all like their stratagems and everything. Like it's just like it's, and you get like a full set of cards and stuff with this. That's, uh, so I mean, um, uh, or the Gellerpox infected, you get all their um, all their stuff, right? And then on top of that, you get what's literally a little baby codex. And so that's this guy here. And it's literally a 40K, tough to get in the cameras here, um, but it's literally a 40K um, kind of version of stuff. So you see the uh, camera's not set up at all to do this, but you got the glitchlings and all that uh, but they've got all the keywords they've got nurgle they've got uh, chaos uh the infantry demon all the other stuff and if you just want to get yourself all excited see if you can see any of this here it's the uh let's see we got some uh death guard i don't know if that's glitching out on the end there um but we've got uh, a bunch of death guard we've got a bunch of um uh nerglings and the glitchlings and all that taking out a bunch of gray knights and uh, with you know other kind of set up with a great unclean one so no absolutely you can play with them in 40k uh the rules are there the points are there um you can't take hordes and hordes of them which i think is almost a good thing um it's basically just like a little mini army that you would attach as a as a squad so yeah really really solid really really cool and uh, moving on uh i want to get his name just right just right. Glitchlings. Ah. Vulgar the Thrice Cursed. Right? <laughs> so this guy was in charge of the engines in the engine room. And um, he um, got infected, you know, got a little bit of a cold. And now he's working for the Big Papa, right? Um, yeah, Lord, it's it's really cool. I'm I'm actually very excited. Um, and you obviously, I don't know if you've been on the channel for long, but I've got a whole bunch of stuff on the Death Guard, and I'm really looking forward to just kind of mating these guys in. I've actually got a massive Nurgle Demon Army that's like thousands of points. I was thinking of doing like an army feature on, um, just kind of showing kind of what I've done and chosen. And it's just it's just fairly straight up stuff, but um, seeing it all together is really really uh, really awesome. So Volgrar, this uh, this guy here, he. Um, he actually ended up absorbing two of his crewmates during this change, right? Uh, and we can see all these crazy weapons and digital components and all this other stuff, and this big mass of boiler in his in his guts. So but literally taking um, you know bits of the ship and kind of incorporating them in. So very much carrying on like we had the chef, or we had the fish guy, or we had the soldier. Um, being able to have this guy, he was basically the chief engineer, absorbing you know, two of his closest buddies, and they run around uh, causing absolute mayhem. Uh, his legs are all these kind of piston-driven kind of engine cylinders and all that. Uh, super cool. Uh, we've got his his kind of work uniform here with hinges and bits and pieces, but you get the big kind of cargo pockets and all that. Um, you got the kind of the valve making up his kneecap, and uh, oh yeah, just. Just, just just, drills and weapons and bits everywhere. I don't know how this guy sits down. Um, or if he sits on you, maybe you're completely boned. He's totally screwed. Um, now you see all the little bits of piping and all this and the hinges again on the other side. But he's still got that kind of really cool kind of bloated aesthetic to him. And what's really neat is this boiler. Like, I love this. And it's actually a flamer in the game. Like, so he can, like boosh out flame all over uh anybody who kind of challenges him and all that 
Uh, very cool. You stitch together at bits and pieces. You can see all the little hinges, not hinges, but you can see the little kind of pistons and, 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 and piping feeding into this guy up here with his light on his head. And, oh man, the valve on, kind of on the chest there. And this piece here, which is like a bit of like a armor or some kind of casing or something like that, grafted onto his skin. Ah, oh, just awesome. Um, you can see here that he's got his big kind of auger or drill in the one hand. Um, and then on the other one, he's got this kind of grabby, uh, piston-y type, you know, thing that was this abomination that was put together. And again, you see that echoing of those screws uh, all the way through. Like, just, just awesome stuff. Um, and I think the guy's even got the big boiler stacks coming out of the back. So literally, this guy is just absolutely kind of absorbed piece of the, pieces of the machinery. And you can see here that the arms are echoing what's going on with the other arm. So maybe that's him underneath, or maybe that's the dudes up top kind of following him around. But it's just neat to see that they know there's some kind of like mutual control going on here. Yeah, man, come on, like that, that model is just awesome. Um, and he's huge, right? Like he's, again, like bringing down a Primaris Marine. Um, I mean, he's he's like a full two heads taller, let alone the stacks and stuff. So uh, having these guys wander around would be, uh, again, pretty darn uh, pretty darn terrifying. So yeah, Volgar is pretty neat. So as a set, um, you get a ton of, again, another ton of plastics uh, with the with the hull breakers in here. I can put these guys at the back maybe. And then we got Volgarar that's in here. Uh, we got the, the Voxy infect, infected guys. And we just got all the little bits and pieces, all the little dudes that are in here. Yeah, really, really nice. So you get a decent amount of plastic. And for a kill team, I mean, we got tons of models. So, you know, I didn't count. There's a 20 model limit for kill team. Let's uh, do the math. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So there's 23 models here. So I'm not sure. I'll have to do a little bit more research on the kill team side to see if they've actually expanded out in terms of, um, uh, in terms of uh, what you can field. But yeah, really nice. Great, great kit. Like, I mean, everything's got tons of character. And again, you don't think you'd want two of these sets but you obviously would love to have have one they're just pretty darn incredible all right okay i'll move those guys off to the side and then we're going to start looking at um our other friends here our rogue trader friends now let's grab in their book so again the uh, lucidian star star striders they've got their own uh book it's a full-on uh full-on codex um, there's, uh, there's, there's kind of fluff explaining what's going on. There's, uh, you know, they got all kind of the stats and all that, a big pile of history of kind of who does what, um, you got all the stratagems, everything. So no, really, really good, really good set. Okay. So let's see. Um, let's start off. I'm just going to grab the, uh, points values here just so that I can take a peek at their names. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, let's start off with um, uh, Nietzsche Squad. And these are the Star Striders kind of on their own. And they've got a ton of personality kind of associated with them. Now, I've actually built a guard, a small army, like an allied force. And that guard army was focused entirely around um, kind of uh, working in the void. So if there was a Corvette or something that ended up, um, if there was a Corvette or something that ended up, uh, you know, getting stranded out there in the, the wide open or something like that, then you'd send in these guys. And um, I'm actually going to do an army feature video on that. I think I've had a few people asking to see that I've mentioned it a few times. Um, but we've got Nietzsche here, um, and I mean, he's got a very much an Arbites kind of look to him, Arbites, sorry, um, and he's got a uh, shotgun that's in there, you can see he's got all the filigree that's in all of his clothing, uh, and uh, it's just going to be awesome to paint this, so I was thinking like maybe a light blue or like a royal blue or a white or something like that, I don't know, i got to figure it out, but it'll be, uh, it'll be pretty soon. 
uh, we can see that he's got the power to his uh, his last pistol in there and you know the power pack but these guys are really meant to kind of defend the ship uh, as intruders come aboard so uh, definitely uh, men at arms if you will men with arms yeah for sure um, and then we've got uh, each of our guys. Now, this guy is so chill. Um, he's kind of, he's standing uh, at an alert, ready kind of status. He's looking over his shoulder. He's got his uh, las gun ready to go. He's got his last pistol up here. You can see all the decoration and ornamentation in his uh, suit with his awesome kind of voidsman helmet, which is really cool. He's got this sling for the, the las gun and the, kind of all the cool filigree on the armor and the boots, and that's awesome. But the guy is so chill, he's smoking a cigar. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, just that guy is confident and chill, though he's fighting uh, big monstrous hulks with a, a cigar. But he, he knows his stuff. He knows his ship. It's pretty good. Uh, next guy up, he's got the slung las gun as well. Uh, the void helmet that's in there. He's got his kind of, you know, he's kind of stepping through the corridors, being a little bit cautious. But these guys know their domain. They know their 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 ship i also like the curious like the kind of the neck guard that comes up in around here and it's just a little bit different than say acadian guardsmen where they've got you know cloth and stuff up there so lots of room to kind of paint and add detail and see what's going on very cool all right next song this is not a chill one yeah 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 okay um so yeah i'm loving the look and feel i like the fact that we've got like the just the just a little bit of ornamentation through all the helmets and stuff so not only are they purposeful they're also you know kind of beautiful at the same time which is pretty cool uh what do we got here oh yeah this guy he's like he's sticking it to them right he says okay you know running around a corner back to a wall with his las gun out you know pew pewing away as he goes but you really get a chance to see kind of the the, the braid that's in here you get to see the armored chest uh because his pose is all wide open he's leaning up and doing his thing um you can see again they've got the, all the uh ornamentation in there and it's just awesome like just just the dynamic posing of this guy is is pretty great now assembling these guys and i meant to say this with everything assembling them uh, make sure you dry fit first because there's sometimes where you're like oh this doesn't fit this doesn't fit and all of a sudden boom and it's very difficult to pick up on the seams uh that exist maybe get a bit of shine from my kind of plastic weld but uh nah nice really really nice and then you got our friend with the rotor cannon. Um, honestly, I don't know, uh, you know, it, you know, er, since the first time you've seen Predator and you saw a guy kind of walking around with a man-packed uh, minigun, uh, this is what you wanted to see for the whole time. Um, and, you know, I love he's got this big kind of drum belt. Uh, he's still got all the kind of the decoration that's in there. Uh, you can see on the calf here, he's got the banding for the, uh, kind of for the front, um, uh, gators and things like that. You've got the, the, the dagger down here, his pistol. And you can see that he just means business. Like he's just like them holding this piece of the the ship, and it's mine. Uh, and so I imagine he would like hold down whole corridors with that big, massive uh, rotor cannon. I also like the fact that he doesn't have his void helmet on, but he's got that kind of naval, uh, just kind of that uh, that cap. Um, so you know he can uh, see what's going on in the field, or he imagines you know maybe he just grabbed the rotor cannon uh, when the alarms went off, and that's what he was wearing at the time. Maybe he was off duty or what have you. But again, really cool uh, kind of first impression uh, on this guy here. Really nice. Uh, well, Bob, I, uh, Bob asks, are they snap fit or are they a solid mold? Um, some of them are a solid mold. Uh, some of them are, most of them are snap fit and um, they fit together great. Uh, I just went through and put together the uh, Soul Wars box. Um, I did the uh, uh, the Stormcast and I did the uh, the Night Haunt in there, and uh, they they weren't amazing. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I had to kind of cut the clips off, cut the pins off to make them all fit together. But um, these guys went together no problems. There's no extra pins and kind of you know tubes to kind of make it all work. Uh, no tongue and groove type stuff. They just fit together super super well. So um, they are snap fit, uh, but they went together super well and i haven't seen like you know it's very difficult to see uh some of the lines that happen like some on some of the bigger guys on the flatter services maybe you can see this 
But once paint's on there and you've got your highlights and lowlights, you'll never see it. So uh, super impressed with the quality of uh, the models, even though they put them in the different colored plastics, which is which is something they really kind of get in the swing of. Um, love that, that they're in different colored plastics. It means that you can see what your different teams are as you as you go. All right, well, the City and Star Striders, uh, they're off the, the, the plate there. And we've got uh, a few other characters as well. Make sure I get the names right. Um, let's look at this. Um, oh yeah, this guy, Larson Vandergraus. Okay, so Larson, or Lars maybe? Lars, we'll call him Lars. Uh, Larson is, um, he's obviously an adept. Uh, he looks very uh, Skitari or Skitari eye. Um, he's got uh, all the trappings of a rogue trader that's in here, uh, but he's gone the way of the machine. You know, he's definitely uh, heavy into the the tech here. He's got the big electrodes on the head. Um, he's got his his uh, voltaic pistol. Um, so kind of cool jargon going on with these guys. But he's got his voltaic pistol and he's got his um, you know his power cable in here. And of course he's got the big uh, the big Tesla coils on the back, which always looks pretty rad, really, when you when you take a look at it. Uh, he's got his data pad in there because everything's remote control. got to hack into stuff. And he's got his power pack all kind of nicely adorned uh, sitting on his side here. Now, a little disappointed with this model in the sense that there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of kind of dynamic posing on this guy. Uh, and because he's a press fit, um, it's a little tricky to, to kind of see. However, I do expect him to be uh, hanging back. I mean, he's got a concussion grenade uh, over here, I suppose, and um, and he's got a pistol. And uh, you know, it's uh, you know, it does a lot of hits if you roll kind of weird on it. But I can see him, uh, you know, standing back and kind of rooting everybody on. I can, I can totally see that. So uh, maybe that casual pose is kind of warranted. So uh, pretty sweet, nonetheless. Actually, really digging that uh, that model in general. Nice. Anyway. Um, so that's him, uh, Mr. Lars Larson. Larson Vandergraus is his name. Um, and I really like what they're doing. You know what it feels like? It feels like they're. Um, <laughs> it feels like they're really kind of playing on the names, as they should. Um, but if it seems like an old Who Done It novel, right? With uh, or like the old uh, James Bond or uh, Austin Powers or whatever. Um, but here's uh, Sanastasia, so uh, you know, Santa, uh, uh, sanitized, right? Sanastasia, so she's sterile, and she's uh, minced, M-I-N-S-T, uh, as in minced up, but uh, like with those crazy claws that she has. So um, definitely a, uh, a doctor uh, with no qualms about getting in there, uh, getting into that wound. Oh, I see you have a slug wound. Let me let me get in there with my uh, Edward Scissorhands here. Um, but again, loads of character for the model, for a for a smaller uh, model. Now the female models all tend to be super slender and wafy and all that, um, but I do think it's, it is kind of cool to see um, an actual female model, A, nice, and B, uh, the fact that she's kind of brutal looking in her own kind of deadly way. Uh, she's got her kind of med kit with all her medicines and stuff that she distributes to the, the glove. She's got a little bit of a reading panel in here. Um, you know, kind of notes of the apothecary where she's got the, the, the light lens in there. Uh, in the back of her head, I don't know what she's got. Uh, maybe she's a heavy user herself, um, but uh, maybe the stims to keep her going when times are tight. And she's got all these kind of different Oculus implants so she can see uh, what's going on with your with her patient there. Uh, she's got the crazy high boots, and then she's got some kind of uh, mushy dude that she's stepping on, uh, just obliterated or minced up or uh, completely uh, completely uh, deaded. So. Yeah, nice model. Lots of and like lots of character. She's just standing there, right? But uh, you know, she's stomping on the dude. She's got the Edward Scissorhands claws, and it's uh, yeah, it's not bad at all. I don't mind this. I don't mind this guy at all, or this girl at all. Very cool. Um, the next one is Casso. Uh, sorry, Nasso Prond, and she is one of the attaches uh, to the Rogue Trader, and. It's a really cool model. So I've got a little bit of an Inquisition force, and I got a few assassins and stuff. And through the years, um, you know, I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, but the Death Cult assassins, there's two models. They're kind of wafy. Um, there's nothing to them, and they got the double blades, and they look kind of cool. But it's very, you know, it's very kind of goth, right? That's always kind of the, you know, it's gothic, right? So who knew? 
But what I'm liking about uh, this assassin is, and again, you get an assassin, she would make an awesome, um, uh, not ever, sir, not Calexis, uh, not a uh, uh, little brain fart, um, uh, Calidus assassin. Um, I think she'd make an awesome assassin, but I also think that this model on its own stands uh, in, in a very cool, unique way. You'll notice the sword is like a samurai uh, katana, which is a very cool kind of initial first thing. And then she's got her hair drawn up into these uh, buns, these three different buns with the, the pins in them. And the detail is so strong that you can absolutely see it. Um, she's got her kind of gas mask so she can work in any environment. Um, she's got this kind of cool kind of uh, metallic -y corset, uh, which is neat. And then some super duper high boots because, you know, uh, we nerds like our high boots apparently. So very cool. Uh, she's got the head of one of the mutants in her uh, in her hand and she's just going out there taking names and numbers. Now, what's really neat is from the scenario that we get where, you know, these things happen in kind of close quarters and, you know, on board the ship and all that. Having a, uh, you know, a crazy death cult assassin running around. Uh, not a bad thing to have uh, when uh, when times are tough. So you got a bit arranged with the um, with the Nietzsche and his Star Striders, uh, but it's also cool to see that you get the assassin in there as well. Pretty sweet, loving it. Um, and then we get Miss Vane herself, and her name full name is da, 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 Elusia. Vane. Uh, so Elucia, uh, E L U C I A, uh, Vane, V H A N E. So Elucia, obviously, uh, you know, she's elusive, and Vane, I mean, she's got lots of ego in here. Now, I'm going to be honest, I first saw the uh, model, I first saw some of the previews and stuff, and I was uh, negative impressed. I thought it was, you had such a wasted opportunity to have this. You know, someone as grand as an inquisitor, uh, or you know, having like you know this rogue traitor, someone who's just kind of so outside the fluff. You could really kind of, you could really go out there and do something different. But I do totally see her. She's paid good money for these mercenaries. Why in the world uh, would she engage and run into the fray, right? Um, she might not even be like this amazing uh, leader, but she's got, you know, the credits on her side. So uh, she's always got her hand on her pistol. She's ready to go. Uh, she's kind of cashing out here. You can see her's got one hand on the pistol, one hand on the sword. But she's always ready to go. She's got one hand on the pistol, uh, one hand on the sword. Um, I like the big plumes that are up top here. Uh, very reminiscent of kind of the, um, the Empire, like Germanic kind of look to it. Um, and she's got her armor and all that. She's got her kind of uh, armored bustier with the swirly dews, uh, you know, kind of around the, 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 the breasts there. Uh, she's got her uh, long gloves and she's got all these kind of little floofy, kind of elegant uh, pieces going in here. Uh, the veil across her face He's an interesting take, I think. Um, adds, again, a little bit of personality, a bit of character. Like, who is she exactly? I don't even think they really put it in. But they've been around forever and ever and ever. And they've been part of these 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 noble houses. So, um, so the standing there, kind of ready to go. Initially, not that impressed. But I don't mind it now. It's kind of growing on me. Um, you know, on the back here, she's got all these kind of floofy uh, kind of bits of cloth and fabric. Uh, just to kind of, you know, accentuate the, the curves a little bit on here. Um, high boots, of course. High heels, of course. Because um, all female characters love to prance around on that stuff. And, um, yeah, no, like just just a really decent model. And when she's painted up, kind of in her colors, and then we got the rest of the, uh, the Star Striders painted up, I think it'll be pretty solid. And then uh, there's one more model, which is kind of a cool and interesting thing. And I'm just gonna grab him here. Make sure I grab his uh, grab his name. Oh, he's a Nietzsche squad. Uh, I should have got that first. Um, but his name, I forget what his full name is. Is it just Aximilian? Let me find it. Oh, I can't find it. Maybe Jack can help me out here. <laughs> Trying to figure out his exact name. Oh, his name is Aximilian. That's right. Yeah, it's Aximilian. I just thought he had a last name or whatever. But here he is, the one, the only. <laughs> this guy right here. So this is Aximilian, and he's uh, 
he's a dog. Um, he's a canid. He's a canine. And, uh, you know, he's loyal. He's, uh, he doesn't eat much. He, uh, he's friendly to his friends and he barks at his enemies. And uh, I'm sure he's got a good bite to him as well. Um, they clearly kind of inspired him off at Doberman, so we'll probably paint him up like that. I've got a three-legged uh, dog named Nugget. I was thinking of cutting his leg off, but I figured I'd do the, the, the preview first. I was thinking of cutting this guy's uh, leg off and then painting him up like uh, my dog. Uh, that suggestion came up a couple times, so I might have to do that. I don't know. We'll see. But in general, it's a great, great model and uh, just a lot of fun to see kind of out there. So, um, the final tally on the Star Striders is um, it's not as much as the uh, Geller Pox guys, but you do get lots of interesting characters, and I think that's what, you know, for one, I'm all about, but I think that's what Kill Team is about, for sure. It's just these cool and interesting characters. Um, one of the side notes that I'm really digging is that they can actually uh, have more specialists. So um, you're not going to get as many uh, characters or actually models themselves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten models total. So we're really not kind of pushing the limits there. But um, we do get more specialists in here. So as we get these guys painted up, I'll probably talk a little bit more about that. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out again if I do a bunch of streaming uh, for painting these guys because they're all kind of unique. Or do I just paint them up in batches and do a, a tutorial for them? So uh, maybe do a hybrid of both and maybe edit the uh, stream together. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that out. But um, for the Star Striders, uh, you, get, uh, you get just a big pile of stuff. Um, and uh, in terms of characters and all that. And they're all distinct and unique. Uh, and there's just, there's just so much character to all of them, which is, which is amazing. So... Um, let's uh, do the final shot here. We'll, uh, we'll throw all of our plastic into one space um, and we'll just kind of do the, the, the sign out. Um, so I hope these reviews are of value to you guys. I know it's um, not everybody gets a chance to kind of see what's going on with all these characters. Um, but for me, uh, it's, it's kind of nice to see that. Um, I don't get any sponsorships or anything like that. So these are uh, models that I'm genuinely interested in. Um, so... In addition to the terrain, uh, just the models you get just to play a uh, game of uh, Kill Team or 40k or whatever, uh, there's loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. So um, is the kit worth it? Um, their box sets are getting very expensive now, I, and I, I, can, I can see that uh, some people having a problem with the price. Um, I understand that. I, I totally get that. Um, and I'm actually buying less bulk. I'm kind of buying more of the characterful stuff and stuff that I can bring to the channel that's a little bit unique and some stuff that I really like to just up and build. Now these guys go with my Nurgle stuff and these guys go with my, uh, just kind of my Inquisitor, Guard, Rogue Traitor-y kind of vibe that I'm going with for the characters. So uh, this box was a no-brainer for me. Um, but if you like Nurgle, I mean the new different interesting models of different scales, uh, smaller than the squads and Nurglings, um, bigger than the uh, Plague Bearers, and smaller than the beasts, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on in here. Um, you could even use these guys for like combat augurants, right? So lots and lots to see. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video, guys. Um, I just want to appreciate the guys that jumped in and joined, and uh, it was great talking to you guys uh, through the evening anyway. Uh, uh, if you like the video, uh, hit that like button, please. It um, Jab it a billion times. Oh, don't unlike it, but just jab it, jab it once, and, and, and but jab all the other ones as well. It, uh, it really helps get the video out there. It really helps get the channel forward and the YouTube algorithms and all that. So the like button is important. Um, if you want more videos like this and you want notifications of our future streams and all that, uh, absolutely absolutely subscribe uh there's even a little kind of bell that's beside it uh you tag that bell and it will bring you to uh it'll give you all the notifications and all your devices and all that fun stuff so um thanks a lot for watching guys uh this was a lot of fun i am so stoked about getting these guys painted up and uh, we'll catch you in the next video